Hi guys, welcome back to the old Warlock. In today's video, we are going to be talking about someone we mentioned on a previous video. Uh, a lot of you, I, there was a man by, we, let me start all over again. Yeah, go ahead. There was a man by the name of Lawrence Dottilio that created an article, or wrote an article in Different Worlds Magazine back in the 80s. It was called You Gotta Be Fiendish. Love the article. We talked about it in another video that came out fairly recently. Mm -hmm. And in that video, I asked people if they, if you knew Lawrence Dottilio or if you were Lawrence Dottilio, please mm -hmm. get in touch with us because I really liked the way that he wrote his articles. He did quite a few of them uh, yeah. for Different Worlds Magazine. But I liked the way he wrote his articles. He had a sense of humor, but just a really, really um, spot on in terms of his approach to role-playing games and ways to make them better. Yeah. Uh, some of you responded about Lawrence Dottilio, and sadly, I came to find out that Lawrence Dottilio uh, died in 2019, so he's a man that I wish I could have met, but I will never get the chance to. Very unfortunate. But I started to do a little bit of research based on some of the comments uh, about Lawrence. Thank you guys for leaving yeah, comments, exactly. by I, the way. I, we appreciate that. You have no idea how much I enjoy hearing about things like this because it just inspires me to go and dig deeper into some of the subject matter yeah. so that I learn more history about Dungeons and & Dragons and role-playing games. It comes from you guys. So I took what you, some of the things that you said, thankfully, and I did some more research on Larry Dottilio, and I really just wanted to do a video talking about a short video talking about Larry Dottilio because he was actually quite a guy and had quite an Very influence interesting on, fella. on role playing games. On, yeah. on, on many things other than just role playing games. Yeah. Um, found out that uh, Lawrence Dottilio, Larry Dottilio, was born in 1948 and very early on he wanted to be a screenwriter. Mm -hmm. And he spent a lot of time just, you know, knocking on doors and trying to get accepted as a screenwriter on various projects. But eventually, he really kind of ended up in places writing for things that really had a major impl impact on pop culture in the 1970s and the 1980s, yeah. all the way up into the 1990s. Some really big stuff. He was, I think he was the prime, di prime writer, prime director. <laughs> he was the prime writer or the main head writer of and developer of Beast Wars Transformers, which was a really popular television show yeah. uh, back in the day. He wrote for Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids, which... which pretty much uh, everyone you know, is familiar with. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I grew up with Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids. He was the, one of the main writers on the whole He-Man and She-Ra mm -hmm. uh, series, serieses, and yeah. he was the co-creator of She-Ra. He wrote for... Um, he wrote for Babylon 5. He was a writer on the Babylon 5 series. Wrote no end of, of Which, you know, is one of episodes the for Babylon 5. Classic, quintessential nerd shows. Right. And he also... But he never really left the, the role-playing game genre either. Mm -hmm. And he wrote something... He worked for Chaosium. And that's how he ended up being a part of Different Worlds Magazine and writing for Different Worlds because he also wrote things and created things for Chaosium. Yeah. But one of the things that he wrote was a module for Call of Cthulhu. Which is one of Chaosium's flagship games. Right. It, yeah. it, it, it really it's is their, why they it's exist. It's their game. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he wrote a module called Masks of Nar... I can never say Nyarlath this. Nyarlath... Nyar Nyarlathotep? Nyarlathotep. Nyarlathotep. Which... If we pronounce that wrong, sorry. It, I'm sure it's Nyarlathotep. Yeah. Or it could be Nyarlathotep. But anyway, yeah. uh, Egyptian-based... Uh, module for Call of Cthulhu mm -hmm. that some people have said. I saw one person who referred it re referred to it as the War and Peace of role playing modules, which is quite that's a compliment. Cool, it's, yeah, that's <laughs> it's, a, it's long term. It's a heck of a statement. But there are also people who say that he changed role playing modules mm -hmm. with the release of that because there had never been something that was so complex in terms of its non linear plot line. And he had huge amounts of historical detail that went into this. And there are a lot of people who say that it is the best role-playing game module that has ever been released. Which and that it affected all modules released after, uh, that came after it. Which, of course, is a very exciting thing to hear because I have been absolutely desperate to play Call of Cthulhu for a very long time now. And it's sounding like this is what we're going to be kind of diving in with head first when we start to play it here, I, hopefully soon. I've really made the decision that that is what we're going to do because for me, as the person who will be running the game, mm -hmm. uh, anything, you know, if you're dealing with ancient Egypt and 
that you have that kind of a of a theme running through whatever this scenario is. Yeah. That's going to appeal to me. So I'm I think that that is what's going to happen. And it has been re-released a number of occasions on a number of occasions to keep up with the different versions of Call of Cthulhu. There were seven, seven Some, now? something like that. But I and I think the most recent one was released 2012. Yeah, I'm not sure recently. about that, but it but it is still yeah. available in a more modern context mm. than 19 uh, the early 19 or the late 1900s when it was uh, released originally by Mr. Dottilio. Yeah. Uh, but I wanted to just mention this because I think that very often some of the people that we should be giving credit to and that should be, I mean, you always hear about Dave Arneson and Gary Gygax, people like that. All hail. Yeah. And I'm not saying you shouldn't be hearing about them, but there, there are so many of these unsung people that contributed to the hobby yeah. and, and not only just to the hobby, but to the, the same time period where the hobby was evolving pop culture was evolving as well. And these people had their fingers in all of those different pies. And to me, yeah. that's really, really cool. And bringing things like the Cthulhu mythos to more mainstream within this community. Like, it's never made a lot of sense to me why Cthulhu has become so weirdly popular. It's just a, kind of an Edgar Allan Poe type of... In a way, yeah. Yeah, in a lot of ways. <clears throat> like, early, late 18, early 1900s type horror. Very gothic horror. But it's cool that people like this contributed to making these universes yes. more popular and yes. bring them into this kind of same fold as Dungeons & Dragons. And so that's a big contribution that he was able to make to popularize the game. Right. And, At least and, help to. And because, I mean, again, I, the reason that I really liked him was because he had he was very insightful into mm -hmm. role-playing games in general. Yeah. But he was also, he also brought a sense of humor uh, because he was an excellent writer. Mm -hmm. And we'll be, I'll be, as I come across more articles by Larry Dottilio, I will be bringing them to you. But long a long time ago on the channel, we, uh, and this was kind of, this, whoops, something just happened with our, one of our computers. The, the ghosts are here. But, um... One of the things that our, our friend Marco in Italy, who we have not heard from for quite I some time. I haven't heard from Marco in a while, now. But one of the things that, that Marco and I used to talk about was standing on the backs of, or standing on the shoulders of people who came before and uh, kind of led the way for us to do role-playing today. Mm -hmm. And I think that Larry Dottilio is one of those people. Yeah. And so, really, this video is just kind of a tribute to him. And I would just like to, I don't have my mug with me, but I would like to hold it up and say, Larry Dottilio, thank you. Cheers to you. If you know anything more about Larry Dottilio, if you have comments about him, if you'd like to uh, let us know of, a, of an avenue that we could pursue to find out more about the man, please do yeah. let us know in the comments or send us an email. Because I think he's a really fascinating person. And yeah. I think that he needs more credit uh, to be pointed, to be drawn to him. Yeah. Uh, than than he gets currently. Yeah, this is impressive stuff, and it's 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 very significant stuff, and so it's cool to be able to to know some of these things and to tell you guys about some of this stuff. Right. So anyway, as well. But go ahead. Keep your ears peeled as soon as we do play Call of Cthulhu, and particularly the masks of Yarlathotep. Yarlathotep here soon. Uh, we'll definitely be talking about that because I will insist upon it. So sounds good. Yeah, you keep will. your eyes open. Yeah, we're gonna, hopefully going to be talking about that here sometime soon. Anyway. Just a little bit of a, of a side note, not a side note, a little bit of uh, trivia, or I don't even want to say that. A little bit of a historical a, episode historic, talking about, uh, some, yeah. Something of historical interest to a very important man uh, in the role-playing game community. Yes. And the pop culture community from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Indeed. I'm Jim. I'm Alex. Keep your sword on free. Adios.